if we would have known earlier what his diagnosis was, I think it would have changed a lot. Rebecca has a brother on the autism spectrum. He was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome at 23 years of age. But I know that that's been kind of added and taken away multiple times. Rebecca knew her brother was different than her other siblings, but she didn't know what it was. Her parents didn't know either. My dad treated us pretty much the same for the most part. You know, my dad was like, oh, okay, well, you know, we have more interests like this than your brother and I have. So my dad would make a point like, okay, your brother's into this, so I'll make sure we focus on that, you're into that, we'll focus on that. But he never really treated us different in that aspect. My mom, on the other hand, you know, when we got the diagnosis of ADHD when he was younger, I was thrown on that back burner. And it made me feel like I had to make up for everything. And growing up, I had resentment towards my brother too because of that. Well, why don't I get this amount of attention? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? And I kind of hopped on the bandwagon with my dad. Mm. You can do everything I can do. Why can't you do this? Mm. Why do you want to sit in a room and play video games? Why can't you go out and socialize? Why can't you, you know, get a job or drive a car? And, you know, as I got older and I realized there's a reason why. Mm. And after we got his diagnosis, it all clicked. What was life like with your brother growing up? Chaotic. In all honesty, we did not see eye to eye a lot. There were a lot of things that he would do that I was like, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Or why can't you do this? Um, you know, we fought all the time, probably worse than most siblings okay. fight. But as we've grown older, we've actually become really close. Rebecca's brother was bullied a lot. And even though they disagreed, she always had his back and stood up for him to the bullies. There were so many times where I could be just so mad because he'd be on the bus and all of a sudden all these other kids are picking on him and calling him stupid, calling him dumb, calling him this and that. And then I'd finally just get sick of it. Like, you know, that's my brother. And I'm the one who can call him those things. You can't, you know, I'll fight you. I don't care if I'm younger, even though we would never saw eye to eye as kids. We still had each other's backs. And I think your, your statement was really interesting that you said that, you know, you said, well, I can call him stupid, but you can't call him yep. stupid, which is interesting. So you became a defender. Yep. Did he need defending often? My brother, when we were younger, he had a lot of aggressive behaviors too. And we always grew up with the whole, you know, let it roll off your back, you know, treat others how you want to be treated. And, you know, my brother and I would always try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt right away. But obviously, other kids don't do that. Right. And kids can be really vicious. And he would try and ignore it and try and ignore it, and then he just couldn't get to it. They'd get under his skin and he would have an outburst or he'd start swinging. I mean, there was one day we were coming back from just a little convenience store down the road from our house. And all the neighborhood kids, for some reason, just decided that was the day that we were going to be the ultimate target. He tried everything he could to maintain calm. And I'm like, come on, let's go. Just ignore them. He just, he couldn't get to it. I ended up getting home probably 10 minutes before he did. Cause at that point I was just like, I need my dad. When she got home, she told her dad and he grabbed his keys and they were out the door to find him. And my brother was so worked up that he had to go and isolate himself for a while just to be able to calm down. And he kind of quit going out of the house after a while after that. The neighborhood kids didn't realize her brother had a disability. He is on the higher end of the autism spectrum and looks normal. So the other kids just thought he was weird and were unforgiving. I absolutely had those moments too. I was like, you look fine. Mm. You do this fine. You do that fine. Why can't you do this? Why can't you be like me? Why can't you be like him? Why can't you be like her? And you know, in our family too, there's multiple people in the family that have diagnoses that range from everything. Mm. And we just never thought at that time mm. that maybe that's why. Once we found out that he was on the spectrum and it was all clicking, like he should have had an IEP, he should have had this, he should have had that. And we didn't have any of those resources. Growing up, she had a lot of resentment for her brother. She said it was really hard and she had to grow up fast. You know, I watched my brother sit there and he was allowed to just play video games all day. 
He wasn't told to get out of the house. He wasn't told to do this. And I was like, why can't I do stuff like that? Why, why don't I get to go do this? Or why can't I do that? You know, and it's a progress I'm still working on kind of getting over into my adulthood. And as my brother and I have gotten closer and we both are aware of the things that happened and how different we are, because my brother sees it too. It, it's helped our bond mm. too as we've become adults. So it, it's been an interesting road for sure um, growing up. What was the hardest thing growing up with a brother with a disability? I would say society. In all honesty, but just where we grew up, it was really hard to be different mm. and not knowing what was there. Mm. I think if I would have known, if we would have known earlier what his diagnosis was, I think it would have changed a lot. Mm. I think it would have helped me understand and not have that envy or feel like, well, I have to be like this or be able to stand up better and bring that knowledge, you know? Mm. So I think not knowing was one of the hardest things. When asked about what was the best thing about growing up with her brother, she said, growing up created a really good bond for us later on. It opened my mind to what a lot of people don't realize. And you can look at somebody and have no idea what's going on on the inside. Mm. And I think that is one of the best lessons I learned. I mean, I walk around all the time now going, you know, I bet John Doe over here might have something, mm. but he doesn't act like it. You don't see it, you know? It's it's like, you know, it's a horrible comparison, but you know, there's, there's cancer. You know, people can have cancer and nobody knows. Knowing now, it's definitely helped fuel what I want to do in life, which is to help people. When asked what advice you would give to a younger you, she said, I would tell myself to stop being so hard on myself and to actually spend more one-on-one -on -one time with my brother. We are adults now and we do spend one-on-one -on -one time with each other. And I tell them all the time, like, hey, do you need something when I go to town? Do you want to go with me? Do you want to come over? Mm -hmm. Hey, like, you know, we just got a new video game. Do you want to come over and show us how to play it? Or, you know, hey, I'm going to this event. Do you want to go too? I mean, my brother and I, we can sit and just talk now. And we never used to talk. So telling myself, you know, take that time, take that extra minute because my brothers had my back more than most people would. Mm -hmm. Especially when things between me and other family members get wild, my brother is always there like, no, like that's my sister. No, I don't care what you say. So we're, we've gotten a lot closer and it's really nice. So yeah, oh, taking that time. Help us make more Orange Socks videos by clicking below to subscribe. And make sure you hit the bell so you never miss an Orange Socks video. You can also find more of our videos here. Thanks for watching.